Hi there and welcome to my channel. And thanks for clicking on this video about five things I learned this week. I should probably clarify that this video is not going to be like all of my other five things videos. Yep, you see, this five things video is a little bit different than my other five things videos because it was sort of spontaneously provoked, if you will, by a disrespectful neighbor and his decision to terrorize our household, but also partially inspired by the local police who think that that is not only okay, but that uh, our household is partially responsible. Now, if you happen to be one of my beloved members, then you know what I'm talking about here today. People have clicked the join button on Call Me Armstrong and support my channel. Get the inside scoop first. But if you happen to be new here, I should probably explain. I'm just a crazy American living in Germany for a long time. Welcome to my channel. I'm glad you could join us. And of course, welcome back and a whole lot of love to my returning viewers and subscribers. I'm really thankful to have you all here today. And I am looking forward to hearing your thoughts in the comments. But I would appreciate before you start typing out that comment, if you would just watch to the end. Because at the end, I mentioned a few things that I really just don't need to hear. You see, regardless of how I present to you this situation here today, even if I use a, perhaps a little bit of a sense of humor, I want to be clear, this was a very shitty situation. And for me, I think just speaking about it today sort of helps me to process the anxiety caused by it. I also know I'm not the only one in the world to have encountered things like this which is why in some way I think it is important to share. So with all that said, let's get into it. Here's five things I learned this week. Number one, not all neighbors, not all neighbors can be as awesome as the one that blasts a pesh mode and offers me gin and tonics on an early Sunday morning. Nope. And not all neighbors can be considered like family. Like the one young man who lives downstairs and I know has always got my back if I need him. Nope, not all neighbors can be like that. But one bad neighbor can ruin a whole lot of atmosphere for a whole lot of neighbors really fast. And well, this week I learned that one bad neighbor can get away with things like stealing, destruction of property, invasion of privacy, littering, even polluting the environment, but also harassment and trespassing and that the local authorities here will do little to nothing to enforce the laws put in place against those exact things, even after repeated complaints. I'm just thankful I got more good than I do bad neighbors with that knowledge that I learned this week. Number two, I got a bad ass landlord. And I mean that in the most complimentary of ways. Like, I'm seriously becoming just a little bit of a fangirl of my badass landlord. You see, it should be said, she never intended to be a landlord, much less my landlord. But yet, there she is, not just fulfilling her role and doing her duties, but in my humble opinion, she's quite frankly proving herself to be one badass landlord. What I mean by that is my landlord has proven to not just have a keen interest on her property and getting the rent, but also shows a real interest in the people living on her property and doing what's right for them. And this week, when the law let me down, well, it was my bad ass landlord who stepped up to the plate, took responsibility, persisted, and made a real effort to make things right. And long story short, when I needed something to make me feel safe here in my own home, well, instead of it being the police who I called, it was my badass landlord who made some effort to try to bring justice to the situation. Thank you for that. Number three, one of my neighbors is very angry. And this very angry and disrespectful neighbor, well, he thought it was appropriate to ring every doorbell on our building until someone ultimately hit the button that let him in. You see this angry guy, he does not live here, 
nor does he have a key, and nobody in the building is friends with him. But nonetheless, this guy thought that it was a good idea to enter our building screaming, banging on the walls, on every door, on every window, screaming aggressively for everybody in the house to come out, and doing this on every floor, banging on every door, on every wall, until he ultimately made it up to my floor. I was sleeping. Long story short, after repeated and multiple requests, well, not just requests, it was being screamed at him that he needed to leave. He needed to get out. This neighbor thought it was appropriate to refuse to leave and needed to be guided out of the building. It's unfortunate that in the process of guiding him out of the building, somebody did get mildly injured. So yeah, this week, I learned that I have at least one neighbor who thinks it is okay to enter other people's houses and terrorize them. Number four, Kindfreund, Kindhilfer. Yeah, so this week I learned that if you call the police here in Germany because a random neighbor has entered your property, is acting aggressively and refusing to leave, after being repeatedly told to do so and instead continues on with aggressive behavior which results in at least one person having a minor physical injury, as well as a lot of stress and anxiety created by being terrorized by this maniac. Well, I learned if you call the police into that situation here in Germany, they will not only ignore my clear request to file a report or file a charge against this violator, oh no, no. Instead, instead, they will just inform everybody that they need to calm down. There's no reason to press charges here. Apparently no laws were broken. And then they will proceed to tell the victims that they too should apologize. It was at that point that I walked away. I, I don't participate in victim blaming. Number five. Those cops, that angry neighbor, well, I learned this week that they were both wrong. Really wrong. I mean, it was a crazy situation. I still don't know what angry guy was angry about and yelling about. And I mean, there were distracting things, like things that can distract police, like I speak with a thick accent. You can bet your sweet ass that after I realized that those police were not going to help me feel safe in my own house, nor enforce laws that I suspected existed, I needed to inform myself. But first, I informed my landlord of yet again another unsafe situation with angry neighbor. And she assured us that she's taking action and doing all that she can. But it can take time and it can be really frustrating here in Germany because it can take a long time. And it's really frustrating when a variety of local government departments have received complaints about this guy from a variety of neighbors and somehow he just keeps doing whatever the hell he wants without any repercussions. So you can bet your sweet ass the first thing I did was get on my computer and research German law and my rights. I was pleasantly surprised that there is a web page called Gesetze im Internet.de. I'll put a link below in the description. On this web page, you have easy, quick access to finding out about the laws that exist here in Germany. And something that I found really helpful was that they are also available in English as well, not just German. Now, you know, I'm, I'm not from here, but of course my little foreigner brain was thinking about where I'm from and I'm thinking, wait a second, wasn't this, wasn't this trespassing? I just kept thinking that there is just no way that this was acceptable. The hell? And sure enough, it didn't take me very long to find a Gesetze Nummer 123-123, Hausfriedungsbruch, or in English, trespassing. Something else I found 
interesting about it, but also did not help my attitude, was it very clearly states when you read their definition of what this trespassing is, and regardless of somebody letting this guy in, it is clearly stated if somebody has been told repeatedly to leave your property, they're trespassing. But it clearly states here that the, um, die Tat wird nur auf Antrag verfolgt. Or, in English, this offense is only prosecuted by request. Well, that left me standing there and scratching my head because I had to think back to when the first cop entered our building and we approached each other and I was to begin talking about the horrifying situation that just awoke me from my bed. And this police officer, a young man, is before me and he's ready to take down my description of what just occurred here and why six of them showed up with two vans. And as I'm telling this guy this story, I'm getting to explain to him how I was in bed and I was sleeping and I was awoken by yelling and pounding. My hands are shaking as I'm telling him this and I'm clearly, visibly bothered by this whole situation. And bro dude decides this is the appropriate time to take notice of my thick accent. And instead of continuing writing and allowing me to continue to get out the traumatizing situation that just occurred, he interrupts me to ask, um, excuse me, where are you from? Dead serious, at the moment he asked me that, I just stopped and I just looked at him. Where I'm from had nothing to do with that situation at the moment. At least not for me. Nonetheless, he allowed me to continue on, appeared to be writing some things down. I then handed him my disability card, which has my name and details on it, and I looked him in the eyes and I said to him, I don't know my rights, but I would like to press charges or take action here to make sure that this never happens again. This was scary and that guy needs to know he can't do these things. Bro cop acknowledged hearing me, gave me a head nod, took my identification and the details of whatever the hell he just wrote down outside before bringing them ultimately back to me. I don't know what he did with my handicap identification when he went outside. Where I come from, when American cops do that, it's they go to their computer and they're looking for something on you because they want to take you in for something. I'm not saying that's what he did, but I'm definitely, after this all was over, left wondering what the hell he was doing. When he came back in and he handed me my identification, he did say to me that they would call me. And I gave him my phone number, I gave him the owner of all of this property, her name and number, and he told me they would call me. But I clearly asked to press charges. So yeah, that's what I learned this week in Germany, and uh, I think it's pretty sad. I think it's pretty sad that I learned that the police here in my town seem to have little interest in enforcing the laws. In fact, they seem to have more interest in where people are coming from rather than what they did. But the one that makes me the most sick is the fact that I learned that that lady cop at the end had no problem victim blaming. So now that you've made it to the end of this five things video, as I stated at the beginning, I wanted to just say a few things here at the end of what I, I really just don't need to hear from you. If you're one of my regular viewers, you know that normally I encourage the heck out of the comment section. I love the fun facts and all the things I learn from you, my beloved viewers. But there are really just a few things I don't want to hear. I've done my research. I did what I thought one was supposed to do and what I was capable of doing. So please, for starters, do not ask me to repeat this action of going to specific people for help that have already slapped me in the face once, metaphorically speaking. Yeah, so don't be that person in the comment section. Don't be the one that says to me that I should go to the police station, file a complaint, don't tell me that I should go and talk to a police or you know a good one I could talk to. Also, don't be that person that tells me to go to the higher up levels of said police station and seek assistance for this. They don't care. They made that very clear. This is also not the first time I've had an experience like this with them. 
The next comment that I really just don't need to read down in my comment section would be something like, um, just so you know, not all cops are like that. Just so you know, not all cops are bad. How about instead of leaving me that comment, you go and you confront your so-called good cops and tell them to start standing up against the bad, lazy, and incompetent ones. And when that starts becoming visible to society, as visible as bad cops are, then maybe I'll believe you. But until then, shut up. And then the last comment I can think of that somebody may want to leave on a video like this that I really just don't want to hear would be something like, oh, that police that wanted to know where you were from and was giving you a funny look as you spoke with your thick accent. He, he wasn't doing that because he has anything against foreigners or because you not being German will affect how he handles the situation. He was probably just doing it for the paperwork. To document the details. So if you were going to leave me a comment like that to clarify that in, in any way, shape, or form, two things I know about you. First thing I know about you is you do not know many immigrants personally. You do not have many immigrant friends. You do not know many people that have migrated here and you do not talk to them to the point where you have a real solid idea as to what their day-to-day -day life is like, what their life is like looking for jobs, interacting with police, just opening their damn mouth, or looking, sounding different in society. You have no clue. The other thing I know about you is you certainly do not know enough people of color. If your first assumption is that that police officer was just looking for data for his form, you are so out of touch with the reality of foreigners everywhere. Not just Germany, not just America where I'm from, everywhere. And I highly recommend that you start talking to more strangers. And not just talking to them, get to know them, listen to them. Find out what they encounter when they look for jobs, when they seek help, when they sound different, when they look different. I've lived in Germany for more than 20 years. I understand their passion, even fetish I'll say, for data and paperwork. But I also understand the Germans' desire for ordinal or order. That police officer was taking a formal complaint from me, from somebody who was very stressed and had just gone through something. It's about time and place, buddy. He should have taken those damn details and he would have found out where I was from when I gave him my information that I gave him because I wanted to file charges against the guy that was terrorizing our household. So excuse me if I can't help but walk away from this situation and not keep going back to those few seconds where that guy was really interested where I was from, even though it had absolutely nothing to do with the situation at hand. And when I watch how it all played out, knowing that two of the cops at one point pulled aside the angry guy and informed him that he was lucky that the people in the house weren't pressing charges on him. If they get called here again, they've been there before. But I'm not going to sit here and lie to you folks and tell you that it didn't feel like they looked at this like two foreigners got in a fight and they should just be quiet and they won't take action anyway because they don't know the law. I'm sorry if that's too brutally honest for you all, but that's honestly how I feel how that went down. And I'm also incredibly horrified that the uh, lady cop at the end thinks victim blaming is okay. I couldn't help but think, what if I did this to her? This lady cop looking at me, who was just terrorized out of my bed by a man refusing to leave. What if I showed up at her house? What if I showed up, rang all the doorbells so someone let me in, started pounding on the doors, screaming like a maniac, and when she came out and tries to remove me, I don't leave. Do you think once she got me out of her house, she would look at me and go, I'm sorry. I guess she had the balls to look at us and say that we should say sorry. The only thing I'm sorry for is actually, you know, screaming for my one neighbor to call them because I needed help. Clearly, I made a mistake there. I digress. I have ranted too much. I have probably said too much, but regardless, I do thank you for watching and joining us all here today. If you are a foreigner living in Germany and you happen to stumble across this video, please take a moment and visit the link in the description 
and make sure that you know your rights. Know the laws here, because you may one day need to actually inform some police of them. Just don't expect them to do anything about it. That's all I got, folks. Until the next time, y'all take care of yourself.